I'm Rob Skinner, and this is the Rob Skinner Podcast. In this episode, I continue my series on how to become a multiplying disciple. I talk about the need to experiment with new things. All this and more on the Rob Skinner Podcast. Welcome back to the Rob Skinner Podcast. My goal is to inspire you to live a no regrets life, make this life count, and multiply disciples, leaders, and churches. Thanks for listening to the Rob Skinner Podcast. If you feel like you're benefiting from the program, I'd like to ask you to support it with a gift. Your support enables me to multiply disciples, leaders, and churches, and inspire others to do the same through this podcast. All you need to do is go to the show notes and there's a link to support the program. Thank you so much. Today I'm talking about the need to experiment with new things. We won't be meeting for live church services for the time being, I told my church members in March of 2020. Little did I know that it would be well over a year before we started hesitantly meeting back together after COVID. I thought to myself at that time, how can I help people when I can't preach to them in a live setting. I stumbled onto the idea of a podcast. The only problem was I had no idea how to start one and had little confidence in the area of electronics or computer hardware or software. In any case, I decided to get started and step-by-step figured out how to start one. I read a book on starting a podcast. I listened to books on it. I came up with my target audience and the reason why I was doing it. There were many times that I thought, I couldn't do it, I'm too old, I'm no good at technical stuff, and no one would listen. I chose to ignore those voices in my mind. Within a month, I had cobbled together seven episodes to launch the show with. Through experimentation, I was a podcaster. The reason we often don't see the spiritual progress we're looking for is that we're naturally attached to the person we are right now. Our habits, our thinking, our belief system, our inclinations have a form of inertia to them. Once set in a certain way, it takes a lot of effort to get them moving in a different direction. Jesus himself points this out in Luke chapter 5, verse 37. He says, And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, New wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for they say, the old is better. What's Jesus saying there? He's saying we get used to certain foods, certain drinks, certain music, and it keeps us from trying something new that God wants us to try. This is one of the reasons why Jesus ran into so much opposition from the Pharisees and Sadducees and even from his allies, the disciples of his cousin John the Baptist. Jesus was bringing something new, and most people preferred the old wine and refused to experiment with change. It's incredibly helpful and important to maintain a flexible and adaptable mindset when trying to grow as a disciple. One of the best ways to view your life is as a series of experiments. I love what Ralph Waldo Emerson writes when he says, Do not be too timid and squeamish about your actions. All life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better. What if, what if they are a little coarse and you may get your coat soiled or torn? What if you do fail and get fairly rolled in the dirt once or twice? Up again. You shall never again be so afraid of a tumble. When you experiment with anything, you're accepting up front that some of your experiments are going to fail. Most may fail. However, if you keep experimenting enough with new habits, techniques, and skills, you'll stumble onto some amazing breakthroughs in your life. You'll find things that multiply your growth, your influence, and your fruitfulness. Viewing life in this way gives you permission to fail without fear and the shame associated with failure. 
No one doing cancer research quits or gets discouraged when one attempt at a cure doesn't pan out. In the same way, in order for you to grow and make a difference in this life, you'll have to pick up and try many new habits and skills that may or may not take you where you want to go. In 2004, I decided to plant a new church in my hometown of Ashland, Oregon. I, I didn't have any outside funding. I didn't have a team to support me. I didn't have an existing church to pay me. I didn't have a career that I was really stepping into. I'd only done professional ministry up until that time. And so I had to start a new career in real estate to pay my bills and support my family. I chose to view this church planting as an experiment. I remember thinking to myself and telling Pam, my wife, this may not work. We may only be there a short time and then we'll have to go somewhere else. I deliberately didn't ask anyone to go with me because of the high risk of failure. I didn't want the responsibility of taking care of other people when I didn't have the resources to take care of myself and my family. But if I had waited to plant the church with full funding, a large team, and a clear plan, that church probably wouldn't be there today. People that I love wouldn't be Christians today. It was a risky experiment that paid off big time. If you're reading this book or if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have big dreams for your future. You want your life to count. You want to do big things for God. And I go, that's awesome. I commend you for that. You may want to go on an overseas mission. Awesome. You may want to learn a foreign language, start a new church, work, work as a pastor or minister, start a teen ministry, learn a new instrument, find a great life partner. All these things are fantastic. Whatever you're dreaming of, go ahead and take that first step. View it as an experiment. Expect and anticipate setbacks and failures. Just keep going until you find the right path out of the many that you start down. Here's some ideas to help develop an experimental mindset. First, read a book on an area that you're interested in growing in. That's always a, my step one. I just my, my kids, my family, my wife, they just laugh at me. You know, they just say, oh yeah, dad read a book. That's where I always go. If I'm interested in something new, I just go to Amazon, I download a book or, or order a book, and I just read about it. I go, okay, is this something I, I think I could do? Next, write down three things you could do immediately to go in the direction of your dreams. Put it on paper. Give yourself 90 days to experiment with your venture. Allow yourself to bail out after 90 days You don't if you don't want to keep going. And then talk to someone who's done or is doing what you want to do. Ask them how to start. Also, give yourself full permission to fail, to flop, to fall flat on your face. Just accept that up front. That's really, really helpful because if your ego gets involved, it'll keep you from trying to do something new. Also, reduce the risk by not including anyone else in what you're trying to do. Just limit your exposure. Just limit it to, you know, try it yourself. Don't try to get other people involved initially. Next, think about and fix in your mind others who've tried and succeeded in what you want. If other people have been fruitful, if other people have done this, you can do it as well. Okay, anything other people can do, you can do also. Another thing that helps is pretend that you're good at what you're trying to do. Experiment with seeing yourself as more skilled than you currently are. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds funny, but just imagine yourself as better than you actually are and go ahead and try it. When I launched the Rob Skinner podcast, I had no idea what would happen. I only hoped that I could inspire people to make this life count, live a no regrets life, and multiply disciples, leaders, and churches. And I started podcasting into a great, big, dark, empty void. I wondered at times if anyone out there was listening. But then I started receiving letters, emails from people thanking me for the podcast and sharing how it had helped them. Two years after the podcast started, Pam and I went to a large Christian conference in Orlando, Florida. I got approached so many times by listeners thanking me for the podcast and for helping them grow and make this life count. And I'm so glad I chose to experiment with something new. Let me just leave you some practical applications. What's one thing you've wanted to do, achieve, or grow in that you've hesitated to start? Just write it down. What is it? Secondly, give yourself permission to fail and to experiment with your desire. And third, write down three things right now you can do this week to start with your experiment.
Thanks for listening. Here's how you can help support the program. First, share with your friends about the program. Let people know about this. If you've got a favorite episode that you like that's helped you, send it to somebody else. Text them. Let them know, hey, you got to listen to this episode. Secondly, read and review one of my books. I've got a couple books on Amazon, How to Plant and Grow a Church or Courage, How to Make This Life Count. What I'd like to ask you to do is when you read it, please give it a review. I've got like 27 reviews on on those books. And I'd like to ask for a lot more because it's really hard for people to find books if there's not a lot of reviews. So if you've read one of those books, just give it a review. Go there and just review it. It'd be really, really meaningful. And I'd appreciate you for doing that. And then finally, support the church, the, the program with a gift today. The link is in the show notes, really easy to support it. And it helps me to get my mission of, of multiplying disciples, leaders, and churches done. Because my goal is to inspire you to make this life count, live a no regrets life, and multiply disciples, leaders, and churches. Have a great day and make this life count. 